Copper is considered a barometer of the global economy's health. Yes, copper. But with the metal falling nearly 10% since the new year, but then oddly rising more than 5% since January 29th, Wall Street is divided over what copper is really telling us about the global economy, the message of copper right now. Cheryl. Well, you know, I was always looking at copper with regards to, again, home building. Remember about three and four years ago where, you know, if you had people across the country that were locking up their copper, people were going into old vacant houses and stealing all the copper wires because the price was rising and rising and rising. It doesn't really seem like this rise that we're seeing right now, this recent rise, really indicates that we're going back into that kind of copper bubble territory. Yeah, but what is the message that it's sending us? I know now, as you see, Lee, China is the biggest user of copper for whether it's uh, electronics or building materials, pipes, that, that stuff. But is there a message that you can split between the rest of the nation and the rest of the world and China? Yeah, listen, first of all, we've known about overproduction from copper mines since 2013. So like the overproduction of oil, this should not come to a big surprise, except if you're a bear out there. I think the other thing is that China does need a little bit less, but that does not mean that they're not going to build anything more, and it doesn't mean that global production is down. Remember one thing, though, that viewers don't know about. Copper is one of the components in these broad commodity indexes, which are generally oil heavy. So a lot of people have been dumping these broad broader commodity indexes because of the drop in oil, and so they're throwing away copper with a broader commodity mix, Not and a copper is yet. a larger Not element a bottom of yet, some Gary, of these indexes. Calpom, but, People but have to remember that. Gary, when something's this cheap, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to go into it? Look, I just think a lot of commodities are in major bear markets right now, and you really don't know where the bottom is. And you're going to get points in time where you're going to get these uh, vicious rallies to the upside, but then typically they fail. I I've got to tell you, the big story for me is not the 10 percent this year, but the 40 to 45 percent since 2011. And if you would have told me that in 2015 copper was down 45 percent from 2011, I think we were in a depression. So I think this is just more has to do with. I think this more has to do with. Uh, there's a lot of supply demand is somewhat slack around the globe but I have to tell you huge surprises that we're so far mm -hmm. down here not only in copper but uh, energy also well you know my grandfather ran a scrap metal yard in Saskatoon Saskatchewan copper was everything to him so it's it's shocking to me but all right I bet there's copper in these next products talk about bold the most popular smartwatch in the world pebble because it's out and it's been out, has a new watch hitting the market right before the release of the Apple Watch. Is it Apple or is it Pebble Beach all the way, Cheryl? What do you think? I think Pebble is actually going to be quite the challenge to Apple Watch. Remember, we've seen a lot of commentary from analysts and from, frankly, a lot of the tech bloggers that are telling us that the iWatch is, is disappointing because they've really changed it from what we initially thought the iWatch was going to be, more of that health device, which really doesn't exist on a true level yet. So I think that Pebble, because they've already got a user that are mm -hmm. buying it. There you go. There's the price. Perfect example is the fact that it's a bit cheaper than the Apple Watch. I think Apple should be pretty nervous right now. And the new one, Gary Kay, the new Pebble Time. 199 has a battery life of seven days. Color display, a timeline for app overload, 6,500 apps, and it cycles through on a timeline. You buying? Uh, let me just say this. Uh, going up against Apple is not the greatest thing in the world to do. You are going up against the greatest brand name in the world right now and an absolute marketing machine. So I think this Pebble is going to need to be really, really good. It does have some advantages, but Apple also in the iWatch has advantage of better re resolution. So we shall see. But just remember, every person that walks into an Apple store, either for an iPad or an iPhone, is now going to see an iWatch, and that is trouble for any competitor. Yeah, Gary, you don't think that the, that the iWatch is going to cannibalize against the other Apple products? I mean, that's what I've kind of seen as a concern here. I, I think there's potential in that, but, but look, I, I've bet against Apple too many times, and, I, and I, I've said before, I thought the iPod was another Walkman, so I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Cut hey, him off. hey, great yeah, to see guys, all of you. you, we, you we, guys, go ahead, you guys, Lee, really you, quickly. Yeah. You, you, you got to remember, whatever the Pebble has that the Apple Watch doesn't have, Apple's going to do some okay. R&D. It's called right. rip off and duplicate, bottom line. We got to go. <laughs> Lee Munson, Gary Kalpom, and Cheryl Cassoni.